Hello everybody, I'm back with my most ambitious disc throwdown yet. This is a comparison of five different overstable putt and approach discs by five different manufacturers. First up, we have the Discraft Luna. This is the Paul Macbeth Tour Series from last year. I picked this up earlier uh, this year. We have the Innova Stud in Star Plastic. This is not a Tour Series disc. This is a standard release. We have the Axiom Envy in Proton Plastic. This is a Gary Patton Tour Series uh, disc. This is one that I actually won in a giveaway by Gary, so uh, thank you, Gary. We have the Lone Star Discs Penny Putter. This is in Glow Plastic. This one, my friend Sean is letting me borrow. He picked this up in Cycle Works uh, in South Houston. Last but not least, the Infinite Discs Ruin. This is in C-Blend Plastic, which is basically champion plastic, and it's in the Metal Flake variety. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these five putters. And just to give you an idea of how these compare like in terms of their profiles, you see a lot of them are very similar, but there are unique differences. For example, this stud has a, a micro bead. This Luna does not. You can see the profiles are slightly different. You can tell that there will likely be a different flight uh, path slightly due to the way the aerodynamics compare. And then you can see here uh, this uh, Envy also practically has a micro bead due to the way the overmold um, uh, meets uh, the disc. It's very, it's almost non-existent, but you can kind of tell. It feels like a micro micro bead. And then this uh, penny putter does not have a, a bead. And then you can see here with the uh, Infinite Disc Ruin that there's actually an aggressive uh, concave uh, design there, which is different than actually all the other discs. And I think you'll see that the flight paths will differ slightly. But you can see that some of these are more or less <clears throat> very similar to each other in terms of their, their shape. And uh, in particular, I think these two are somewhat similar. Uh, I'd say these two are the closest to each other in terms of look. Uh, and these are all in premium plastic, so you can basically uh, feel the quality. This actually glows. This is also Metal Flake Glow plastic. This glows, and both these glow very bright. But, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I actually like the feel of all these discs. Like this little micro bead doesn't bother me. <coughs> I'll be honest, beads don't bother me at all. I don't really care if there's a bead or not on a disc. I care how the disc flies. First, secondly, how it feels. Lastly, how it looks. And really, it just needs to be visible uh, on the course so I can find it easily enough. And this, even though this is green, it's actually somewhat reflective. So this, even on green grass, is extremely detectable uh, in light. And this here is kind of a yellowish green. This is also very easy to see. Those are my concerns in buying green or brown discs. Is how easy are they to find? Well, even in the lush grass of uh, Texas, um, I have no issues finding these. This actually was left out in the, uh, uh, in the sun of a, of a window of a store where I bought it. And it actually slightly... Uh, discolored the, the plastic, but I think it actually looks phenomenal. I think uh, it's supposed to be a little bit more of a, a tannish yellow sort, and it's more of a bone slash beige kind of plastic, but I, I love it. So anyways, now that I've shown you what these uh, discs, uh, you know, look like, they're all about the same weight, um, they're all in premium plastic, let's go ahead and see how they fly.
Thank you to Mike for helping me with the throws for 200 feet and beyond. Now I'm going to address these discs individually and then I'll summarize my comparison. So let's go ahead and start with the Luna. In my testing with this Luna in Big Z plastic, it's the least stable of the five putters. Not greatly so, but somewhat noticeably. Uh, I think it's charitable to assign the Luna a three fade. I think it's barely a fade of two. I think all the other flat numbers are correct, however. I would classify this as a barely overstable putter. It was harder for me to, you know, for example, to Anheuser the Luna and get it to accurately pan out. You know, maybe it's user error, but that was my experience with it. It needed less any, you know, than any other discs to turn in flight. That's not necessarily bad. It's just something to keep in mind when you use this putter. It's possible there are, not, there are enough differences in other runs that would be more or less stable, but this is premium plastic and it's not warped or heavily used. I mostly use this disc for throwing in my side yard for approach practice. Mike was also surprised at how understable the Luna was compared to the other discs. He said the, lunar, the Luna putter will hold the line, for example, that it was good at doing that. And he was throwing the, you know, his other Lunas because he primarily throws uh, Discraft. And they were also flying similarly. So it wasn't just, uh, you know, my disc here. Again, that's not to say that it's a flippy putter or anything like that. If you throw it correctly, it'll fly straight, <clears throat> just as you would expect. So now let's talk about the stud. <clears throat> Um, Mike said uh, uh, during his throwing that the stud is beefy, and I have to agree. Um, it's not very overstable. It does fight turn better than the dart that uh, if you've seen me use from time to time, in particular Sean. Um, I used to bag that, that disc, for example. Um, this disc allows me to trust it to come back if I throw it with some power. Um, I also had one of these in XT plastic, which is now up on my wall. Uh, but I wanted one that's a little more stable uh, and is a little bit less easy to warp, basically, over time. Um, and uh, this one came through for me. Um, it's replaced the XT version uh, in my bag or my cart, uh, as it were. Uh, the thing about this disc is it doesn't fade hard. <clears throat> it also doesn't skip much and allows me to get more distance than basically any other putter that I have with me on the course. The only putter that travels even farther than this is my dart, but that disc is more finicky in my hands than this one, and it's trickier to get the angles. This one, I feel a lot more trusty when I try to put it on um, you know, a heavy throw, when I use it <laughs> to throw a great distance, like 150 feet or more. Uh, the Envy, what can I say about this disc? This seems to be a little bit more stable than the Luna and the Penny putter. I would put it right next to the stud here in terms of stability. These two I would put side by side. This disc flew exactly how I thought it would from the flight numbers. And it basically felt interchangeable <clears throat> with the stud for me. It is very easy to control. And I believe this offers a great point and shoot alternative to any of these discs. Or primarily the first four. And I'll go into that later. If you throw Axiom discs, this should definitely be in your bag. Now let's talk about the Upstart disc. This is the Penny Putter by Lone Star Discs. I found this also very easy to throw. And with my experience throwing a wide variety of putters at every level of stability, uh, this had no learning curve. Mike, who has a number of Penny Putters, he said the Penny Putter has a little bit more glide. Uh, he also thinks um, this version is a little bit more stable than this Luna that I have. Mike has a few of these in different plastics, so I trust his judgment with them, with me not having thrown those. Both him and Sean love their penny putters, and I'll, I'll, I have to give this one back to Sean <clears throat> after this review. But I've heard the term money <laughs> used by them both <clears throat> with regard to this putter. Last but not least is the Infinite Discs Ruin. Now I need to spend a little more time talking about this disc than any of the others, Primarily because this disc really is set apart from the other four in this comparison. I had a hint of this when looking at the, the specifications for it and reading the reviews of this on the Infinite Discs website. 
But when I got it in my hands and I started throwing it, and then I started gearing up for this <clears throat> video, I could just tell just from holding it and, and then later on from throwing it that this is <clears throat> definitely more stable. Mike and I both agree that this ruin is more like the zone. He said the ruin is pure beef, actually, those are his words. This disc is an outlier because the rim on this disc is significantly thicker <clears throat> than the rim on the other ones. <clears throat> These others are typically between, uh, you know, the rim thickness or wing length. It's typically between 1.0 and 1.1 centimeters. That's wing length or rim thickness. That's that uh, specification there. And this one here has a 1.3 centimeter rim thickness. What, and really what that means is that there's more weight in the rim and less on the flight plate. And that makes this beefier than the other putters. It's noticeably more stable and I believe it's in a different category of disc altogether. It's not bad, it's just what it is. Um, it's a small diameter mid-range in my personal opinion. Just because this was given similar flight numbers to the Luna and the Penny Putter by the manufacturers, you know, 3303, that really doesn't mean anything realistically, you know, for the average person that just grabs a disc and wants to throw it. This is a very overstable approach disc, whereas any of the other four putters have various degrees of stability from slightly to moderately overstable and that's fine so let me explain what this means in terms of like throwing etc this ruin had to be released later or thrown farther away to the right you know from a backhand perspective for me in order to have it hyzer back to the same spot it was harder to for me to get the ruin to use the same lines as the other four putters since this was relatively speaking more stable than them I needed more Anheuser to get it fly to fly like the others as well. So if I didn't deal with the, the release point, I had to deal with the release angle and even to some extent changing the, the nose angle, you know, whether it's nose up or it's completely in line with the trajectory that you're throwing. As soon as Mike picked up the ruin, you know, when he grabbed these out on the field, he said that it felt weird, kind of like a bigger disc. Um, that's the last part is not his words, but the word weird <laughs> was what he used because he had been throwing putters. He loves throwing putters. And he said this was more stable when he threw it, as you can see on the video. Even my throws of merely 100 feet in distance, I could tell that this ruin was more stable than the other putters. So again, I'm not saying this to, to knock this disc. I'm just saying it's a fantastic disc that competes with the Zone, Pig, Harper, any of the other very overstable putters or even some of the small diameter mid-ranges. It's only an issue of expectations, not of build quality or whatever. It's a fine disc. I recommend it just like I recommend the others. You notice I don't dog on any of these discs. None of these are bad discs, and I didn't think, I didn't feel disappointed throwing any of them. Um, so now it's my turn, it's my time to summarize this. I'm gonna do this all in one take. A lot of these discs, particularly these four, are so interchangeable that these will fly very similarly overall. I'm sure at a, at a micro level there are some differences that I could not discern from my time throwing these. But these will fly straight with very slight hyzer at short distances. But at longer distances you're going to have to tweak the release angle to get them to flip up. And for hyzer throws, you know, for more of a strong or sharp hyzer, they're probably more similar to each other than when you change the angle away from hyzer. Uh, for Anheuser throws, um, these will pull out of, out of a slight ante angle, but, but you really need more ante for them to hold that line. In, and of course, no surprise, the exception is the rune. Uh, this has extra stability due to its design. You need to treat it like a more stable disc and you know with the hyzer angle etc etc if you throw a mixed bag and can't, can't get one of these that you like typically you know maybe you like one you know more than the other but they're out you can't get that one get one of the others why not i think that you know they're similar enough in terms of feel the plastic type that you should let things like avail availability factor into your decision if you can't get one that you absolutely have to get you know, get another, you know, we're dealing with a plastic shortage still, and that's something you should consider. I think the Rune fills a different slot, but I think this competes with other putters 
uh, in that slot. And I think these are all fine discs. So anyways, that is going to do it for my most ambitious disc throwdown ever. It took me about four hours to record everything in three different days, including Mike's throws. I originally had over an hour's worth of video all told that I had to edit down, plus about 10 hours outside of all that to script and then actually do the editing. I hope that you like this video. I put a lot of love and care in, into it. I really enjoyed doing this. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, please subscribe to my channel as I have more disc golf content on the way. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.